Lots going on in the world of mixed martial arts. We've got fights this weekend, of course. Islam Makachev taking on Tiago Moises. We'll get into that in a little bit. But, of course, the biggest man in the world of combat sports right now, as we know, is Conor McGregor. <clears throat> uh, we had a lot to talk about with McGregor on Monday or Tuesday, as it were. But there's more updates. There's more updates. And uh, he's still here in California. He had surgery. And he went to Instagram and gave a little update. So uh, let's take a look for those people that haven't heard. Brian. People are asking me, when was the leg broke? Uh, what, at what point did the leg break? Ask Dana White, ask the UFC, ask Dr. Davidson, the, the head doctor of the UFC. They knew I was, my leg, I had a stress fractures in my leg going into that cage. So it was debate about pulling the thing out because I was sparring with no shin pads and I was kicking, I kicked the knee a few times. So I had multiple stress fractures in the shin bone above the ankle. And then I have trouble with the ankle anyway, do you know what I mean? Throughout the years of fucking fighting all the time. So, and I also was wrapping my ankle. I was wrapping my ankle every, every training session. You know, I even done a lot of uh, training sessions where when the ankle was sore, I still wouldn't stop training. I used to just train on my back. And that's how I developed those, uh, those ground and pound shots from the back. That's why I dust them back the way. When we were on, when he was on top of me, and I was landing the up kicks and the elbows and all, it's a horrible place to be in. When someone, when you're against someone like me, you can't land. It takes so much effort to try and land shots from your top position, and while you're trying to do that and you're losing your energy, you're getting lumped out by downward elbows and vicious up kicks. And it was a skill I developed because I had the the damaged leg, and I had to adjust my training. So you know. Now, I'm essentially at the getting exactly what I needed to get there. I needed to get... I needed to get treatment on my leg. I needed to get treatment on the ankle, and I needed to get treatment on the shin bone. And I would have never... I would have never committed to going under the knife unless something like this has happened. So something like this has happened. I'm at the going in, I'm at the getting exactly what I needed. And what I needed was a titanium shin bone. So now I've got a titanium rod going down the knee, from the knee to my ankle. And the doctor said it's unbreakable. It's a yeah. lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But listen, um, you know, he said, he said the doctors knew about him having a, a stress fracture. I don't know what quantifies a stress fracture, but I think if there was an actual fracture, they would have pulled him from the fight. But no doubt he did damage it. I'm not saying he's a liar. I don't know anything about the situation. Sounds like, you know, th th there was an issue going in. Uh, Dr. Davidson, by the way, he's the head medical officer for the UFC. He's the guy that you're going to go through for, for everything. He handles and liaises with your doctors and all the rest of it. So, uh, the reality is um, he still chose to fight, so God bless him. I'm sure everyone was very happy about that. Um, but fighters going injured all the time, to be fair. You know, I mean, I did enter about fucking 12 fights with one eye. I'm not trying to take <laughs> away from his, but it, it, there's always little bumps and bruises, Lewis, as you'll find out because you'll be fighting in November. Yeah, yeah, November 13th looks like that is the official date for uh, myself versus Jason Else, Else Media 21. Thank you. And uh, yeah, of course, and we hear that all the time. Nobody goes into it 100%, and you make the decision. Um, and I think that, you know, look, uh, I, uh, Connor's great. Like, uh, I'm not taking away from like Connor be great. And uh, obviously, and I think we've talked about this so many times. I think Connor needs to convince himself of the excuses to enable him. He needs to convince himself that he's truly the best and unbeatable. Right. Yeah. He needs to convince himself of that. He's not the type of fighter to walk away from this and go, what did I do wrong here? How can I learn from this loss? He needs to walk away from it going, no, this was a fucking fluke. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to kill him. I could beat him 10 out of 10 times. And that sort of um, confidence will likely bring him to, you know, able to motivate him to train to be the absolute peak Conor McGregor. So I'm not yeah. saying that it's wrong. You know, Conor knows how to be the best version of himself. Um, but it just, in my opinion, it doesn't do him any favors in terms of fanfare. <laughs> It just comes off like he's making excuses. You, you know, at one point you want you want the guy who loses to give the guy who wins credit and go the better man won that night. You just want that. There's like closure there that you that you almost have respect for fighters doing that. And Connor just sort of doesn't want to do that with Dustin. Yeah, no, no, I, that that is a fair assessment. But I also think there is obviously he's got legions of fans out there that love to see that kind of attitude. They love to see that and they actually take inspiration from it. And, you know, it's fair play because as fighters, certainly when you don't like someone, 
I don't know where this got, uh, you know, where the bad blood came in so much. I guess it was the donation stuff, but whatever. Um, you know, when there's bad blood, you, you don't want to give credit, you know, so that's fair enough. But there's a lot of people that just love everything about Connor. He actually put out another video as well. Brian, just cue that one up and play that when you can. It's pretty funny because, uh, you know, he's rolling through the neighborhood where he lives. Conor McGregor on an electric wheelchair with his feet up. It's pretty funny. And I got to say, fair play to the man, you know, in his position. He could easily just disappear now, but he's already talking about making a comeback, you know. And as you know, I'm not going to sit here and kiss his ass, but you got to give credit to that, you know. But Brian, press play on the video, please. I'm at the going in, I'm at the getting exactly what I needed. And what I needed was a titanium shim bone. So now I've got a titanium rod going down the knee, from the knee to my ankle. And the doctor said it's unbreakable. So once I build back, you know, first of all, manage the, 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 the incision, the cut, you know, make sure it doesn't get infected, keep the health on it, keep, keep building back that way. Then I'll start playing with the balance, learning how to stand on it again, learning how to balance on the single leg again. Then I'll build the strength. And then I've got an unbreakable titanium leg. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like, I was, I was talking to my physical therapist, Hedda, who was with Arnold Schwarzenegger, because I wrote a half. And I was saying, I'm like Arnie and Terminator too. You know what I mean? So I it's pretty funny. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the neighbours. Do you know when you're looking out your window? You're like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I just saw Conor McGregor rolling down the street <laughs> in an electric wheelchair. They're like, no, 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 you did it. What I want to know is, I'm gonna have to call Conor. I think because uh, whenever my mum came over from Cal uh, from England, we'd always take her to Disneyland because my mum can't walk and she's in a wheelchair. And if you're with someone that's in a wheelchair, you get right to the front of those lines. You know yeah. what I mean? No waiting. Uh, so, yeah, Connor, if you're free this weekend, <clears throat> let's go Disneyland, baby. Let's go. Also, to be honest with you, they can't really ask you what's wrong with you. So same thing at the airport. Like when you get to the airport, if you just say, hey, I need a wheelchair, they have to bring you a wheelchair and then push you to the front of the lines everywhere. And they can't ask you. It's against the law for them to ask you. You can rent a wheelchair at Disneyland. You don't have to show up with your own wheelchair. You can rent one, yeah. sit in the thing, and then go right to the front of the line, which is bullshit. I don't like that. We're digressing, but still, it is interesting. It pisses me off. There's kids there. Off? These assholes cheating the, the lines. Listen, if you've got a proper medical condition, fair enough. I get that. But it's for children. It's for fucking children, and they have to stand there, wait in the lines, in the scorching sun, and a lot of overweight people, just because they have no discipline, I'm telling you, they take advantage of the system. They don't want to walk, and they go right to the oh. front and say, "Oh, you're fat shaming. You're fat shaming." I'm, right I'm not fat shaming. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I look. I try to. I try to spread. Know, if kids experience at Disneyland shaming. That's what I'm doing. I try to spread body positivity here. I thought that's the, what this podcast was about. We're about feminism, body positivity. One hundred percent. Everybody gets a trophy. Uh, everybody's a winner. Man, that's great. I don't care. No shame. That's up to you. That's up to you. I couldn't care less. But don't make my fucking kid <laughs> wait in the sun. No, 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 no. Just because you don't want to wait in line, uh, nothing to do with the, the, the fatness or the. I'm not talking about fat people. I'm leg. talking about literally people that want to scam the system. I have respect for it. I have respect for it. If you pretended to be crippled and that you couldn't walk, and you just came in and hobbled in, and you're like, "Oh, I need a wheelchair," and then they just wheeled you around Disney World. That'd be fucking hilarious. I'm just saying, if I'm ever in the line at Disneyland and I've got to stand there like a dickhead and I'm waiting. In the sun and little Lucas and maybe I've got some younger kids because Lucas is a bit old now to even give a shit but some I've got some younger kids with me I'm taking them out for the day I'm babysitting and then I see you stroll by on a fucking wheelchair go this brings babysitting service I just want to see <laughs> that I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not going to fly. I will rip you out of that goddamn wheelchair. Anyway, listen. Help, help. <laughs> He's attacking me because I'm fat. <laughs> you are fat. Um, uh, you got till November 13th, though. You're good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, McGregor. I mean, it's nice that he's uh, talking about coming back. I do believe it is. It is. You know, I mean, fair play. Fair play. Already talking about the comeback. But I guess, you know, he's got to do that, you know. But is still, this... I do respect it.